Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another geometry lesson. Today we're going to talk specifically about isosceles and equilateral triangles, talk about a couple of the theorems involved with each, and we will get into some proofs as well. <clears throat> so before we start off, take a few minutes, try to answer questions one to three as a little warm-up, and then join me back for a discussion. Okay, so it says find the measurement of each angle in the triangle. Uh, we're not given any of the angles, so there must be some other way that we can come up with some of these angle measurements. What we do know is that all three sides are congruent by the tick marks. If all three sides are congruent, we know that this is an equilateral triangle, and we know that all the angles of an equilateral triangle are equal. So we could call these all x, which means x plus x plus x equals 180 degrees by the triangle sum theorem, uh, 3x is equal to 180, and x is equal to 60. So each angle has a measurement of 60 degrees for an equilateral triangle. Uh, number two says true or false. If false, explain why. Every equilateral tr triangle is, not in, it's already fixed on your paper, I'm gonna fix it on mine, uh, is isosceles. Uh, that is true. Right, because every equilateral triangle has three sides that are congruent, and every isosceles triangle has at least two sides that are congruent. So if it's equilateral, it's going to have at least two sides because it has all three sides that are congruent. So true. Uh, the converse of this statement would not be true, right? It's, if it said every isosceles triangle is equilateral, well, no, only some isosceles triangles are equilateral, right? If we think about a Venn diagram, if this is my isosceles triangle uh, group, well, inside of the isosceles triangles, we have the equilateral triangles. So every equilateral triangle is contained in the larger isosceles uh, triangle group, but there are isosceles triangles, right? Like out here, we have isosceles triangles where just two sides are the same, uh, not all three, so they don't fit in the equilateral category. Okay, number three says true or false, if false, explain why. An isosceles triangle cannot have an obtuse angle. Well, uh, an isosceles triangle has two sides that are congruent. Right, we don't, that third side can or cannot be. Um, which means that there's also two angles that are congruent in an isosceles triangle. They're the angles across from the congruent sides. So those two angles have to be congruent, but that third angle could be something different. And again, I would encourage you to sketch out some examples here if you haven't already, right? I could have an isosceles triangle that looks like this, but I could also have an isosceles triangle that looks like this, right? And maybe these angles are both 40 and 40, and using the triangle sum theorem, this angle would be 100. So this would, oops, uh, this would be a reasonable counterexample. because we just drew an isosceles triangle that does have an obtuse angle. All right, let's get going with uh, the new stuff for today. All right, so when we're looking at an isosceles triangle, we, told that we call the two congruent sides legs. Um, so these would be legs. I know it's not written here, but we would actually call this side the base. So the side uh, that's not congruent, or again, sometimes all three sides are congruent, but then we would refer to it as an equilateral triangle, even though it's also considered isosceles. Uh, that third side that's not congruent, we would call that the base, if only two sides are congruent. Uh, we call the angle between the two congruent sides, we call that the vertex angle. So this angle right here V 
vertex angle. The other two angles, uh, and these are labeled 1 and 2 here, these we call the base angles. So these are these two angles right here. All right, let's move on to our first theorem. We have the isosceles triangle theorem. Uh, so this says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. So it starts off with if the two sides, then the angles opposite are congruent. Um, so given our hypothesis here, Take a second, pause the video, and see what our conclusion would be if sides AB and AC are congruent. And you could do the same for the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem as well. Okay, so the conclusion for the isosceles triangle theorem would be that angle B is congruent to angle C because those are the angles across from the congruent sides, or opposite. The converse, uh, again, just swaps the hypothesis and the conclusion. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So our conclusion would be side ED is congruent to side DF. So those two sides are opposite of the base angles. Uh, it's important to note that these theorems are different from the definition of isosceles triangle, which states a triangle is isosceles if it has at least two congruent sides. All right, let's look at a proof. All right, uh, pause the video. Give yourself a few minutes to try to figure out the reasons for these statements, and then join us back for a discussion. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the given, and I'm going to decide, can I label anything that's not already labeled in my diagram? So it says angle P is congruent to angle T. Angle P, congruent to angle T. It says segment Rx is congruent to segment Ry. Segment Rx congruent to segment Ry. And it says segment QP is congruent to segment ST. Segment QP congruent to segment ST. All right, now let's think about what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that segment PY is congruent to segment TX. Well, the first reason is going to be given because that's all the given information. Then it says angle RXY is congruent to angle RYX. Well, I've got RXY, two arcs, and angle RYX. Now, I know if I'm, if I'm looking at this triangle right here, uh, let's do it in pink. If I look at this triangle, I know that two sides were congruent already. That was given. So how could I prove that the angles opposite those sides are also congruent? Well, it's going to be one of the theorems we looked at above. It's either going to be the original theorem or the converse. So we are given the sides, and we're trying to prove the angles congruent. So that's going to be the regular theorem, the isosceles triangle theorem. If we had started with the angles and we were trying to prove the sides congruent, then we would use the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay. Now it says we need to have a reason for why triangle QPY, I'll highlight that in blue, triangle QPY is congruent to triangle STX. Well, uh, can we use one of our shortcuts here? Do I, sh do I see, you know, two angles, sets of sides? Uh, do any of one of those acronyms fit here? Well, for the blue triangle, I see two angles and a side. And 
those match up with two angles and a side from the orange triangle. Right? I have angles P and T. I have angles uh, R Y or sorry R X Y for the blue. Sorry, <laughs> R Y X for the blue and R X Y for the orange. And then they both share, or they don't share, but they have two sides that are congruent, uh, Q P and S T. So this would be angle angle side congruence. Then, uh, based on the fact that the sides are congruent, right? Well, how do we know that PY is congruent to side uh, or segment TX? Well, that would be our CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, let's move on. So here you're just being asked to do some application problems. You're trying to find find some missing sides and missing angles. Um, let's do one of these together, and then we'll leave the other ones for you to do on your own. So for number one, it says find the value of x, set up set up an equation, and solve. So let's look at what we're given. We are given one angle measurement, and we're asked to find the other angle. Now normally we would need two angles if we're going to set up a tri set up a triangle sum theorem equation. Uh, however, this triangle is special, it is isosceles. So we know that the two angles across from the congruent sides have to be congruent. So we can say that both of these angles are x. So we can say 38 plus 2x, or you can say plus x plus x is equal to 180 degrees by the triangle sum theorem. I get 38 plus 2x is equal to 180. I get 2x is equal to 142. And I get x is equal to 71. All right, uh, your task will be to do number one and the other problem. Uh, we may go over those in class or do those in class as well. Uh, but let's get to equilateral triangles before the video is over. So equilateral and equiangular triangles. Uh, the definition of an equilateral. An equilateral triangle has exactly three congruent sides. Then we're actually going to come down here to equiangular before we talk about those two corollaries. An equiangular triangle has exactly three congruent angles. Uh, and then all these two corollaries talk about is that if a triangle is one of these, so if a triangle is equilateral, then it will be equiangular. Vice versa, if a triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. Uh, brings us back to unit two, where we talked about biconditionals, right? We could say a triangle is equilateral if and only if it's equiangular. Um, that's putting this conditional and converse together. All right, so the first thing that they have for us is some diagram problems, and that's actually it. Uh, I did not include a proof for equilateral. Uh, that's because you're not going to use these theorems uh, in any of the proofs we do. From now, uh, you'll just use them to solve diagram problems. At least I can't think of any proofs that I have you do with uh, those two corollaries. Um, okay, so let's do one, and then you can do the other ones, or the other one on your own, or we'll do it in class. So number one says, find the value of x, set up an equation, solve, then find the measurement of angle A. Well, we, again, are not told anything about the angles except for C. However, we are told that the triangle is equilateral, right? And we just talked about that statement up there. If a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. And equiangular means that all three angles are congruent. Uh, so this one, we can say three, and I'll do, rather than writing those all out three times, I'll do three times the quantity three x plus 15 is gonna be equal to 180 degrees. Again, the triangle sum theorem. So that gives me nine x plus 45 
is equal to 180. This gives me 9x is equal to 135. And this gives me x is equal to 15. So we're done. No, we're not. Just kidding, right? You always want to check to make sure that you've answered uh, what they're asking you for. And it says find the measurement of angle A, not just the value of x. So measurement of angle A, we know that's congruent to C, so it's equal to 3x plus 15. So that's going to be equal to 3 times 15 plus 15, which is equal to 45 plus 15, which is equal to 60, 60 degrees. And let's be honest, uh, because they were just asking you to find the measurement of angle A, you really didn't have to go and find X because we know that all the angles in an equilateral or an equiangular triangle uh, have to measure 60 degrees. It's the only way that they can all be congruent and have the same measurement if they have to add up to 180 and fulfill the triangle sum theorem. So good to know how to set up an equation, right? If they asked you to find X, uh, but just understand that there was a little shortcut there. Uh, we knew that the measurement of angle A had to be 60 degrees from the get-go. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, as always, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will look forward to seeing you next time.